host of Christians respond to the Pope allowing same-sex blessings. It's time to examine scripture and see if he has missed the mark. This will bring us to a biblical discussion on authority. Has the Pope or the Catholic Church overstepped theirs? Let's consider the truth about that on this episode of Real Truth. It's time for a biblical take on cultural opinions, events, and news with Real Take. Pope Francis will now allow blessings for same-sex couples. As long as these blessings are not included in regular church rituals or liturgies, or as part of a civil union or other similar custom. They stated that the blessings should not be seen as legitimizing or validating their status and that the church's position and marriage as between a man and a woman has not changed. Ministers can pray for the peace, health, patience, and cooperation of those requesting blessings so they can receive God's light and the strength to do His will. These blessings should not be withheld from those who seek them and to worship the Lord, neither should they undergo moral analysis or be required to be morally perfect. According to the Christian Post, same-sex couples and those in irregular situations can only receive a blessing if they beg that all that is true, good, and humanly valid in their lives and their relationship be enriched, healed, and elevated by the presence of the Holy Spirit. Further, the Catholic Church should be able to get close to people in every situation, especially if they seek a blessing. Pope Francis has long supported civil unions and has taken a softer approach to same-sex relationships. Not every Catholic agrees, though, and conservative bishops have pushed back, revealing the division over the issue. An archbishop in Kazakhstan has even prohibited these blessings in his archdiocese, calling this a great deception. Franklin Graham has also spoken against this, warning that such blessings will not save you from the judgment of God, and that the Pope doesn't have the right to bless what God calls sin. Franklin Graham is right, and this transitions us to see what Scripture teaches on this issue and the idea of authority. First, it must be clearly stated that homosexuality and other sexual relations outside of the context of marriage is sinful in the eyes of God. We see this in Romans 1, verses 26 and 27. For this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions. For their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another. Men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. There are numerous other verses on this subject, but clearly, same-sex relations are sinful, and this is not something that the Holy Spirit is going to bless. There is nothing wrong with praying for same-sex couples to repent, but to pray for the enrichment of their relationships only gives approval to what is evil, something that Scripture clearly teaches against. In Isaiah 5 verse 20 we read, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, and put darkness for light and light for darkness, and put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. In speaking about the unrighteous, Romans 1.32 says, Though they know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. 
It doesn't matter that the Catholic Church still regards same-sex relationships as illegitimate because by their actions of blessing them, they give a form of approval and even legitimacy to those who live in this sin. It's kind of like teaching your kid that it is dangerous to cross the street without looking for cars and then blessing them when they go into the street with the blindfold as long as they realize that it is still dangerous. It really doesn't make sense. While the Catholic Church claims that they can do no wrong, and have even said that the words of the Pope can be infallible, the truth is that if you compare their actions with Scripture, they have erred in many ways. Also, if their opinions change so often, then how can they even be considered infallible? Just this claim of infallibility shows that they put themselves as a mediator between God and man, and that you can trust no other authority or word other than what comes from the church. In 1 Timothy 2 verse 5, the Bible tells us, For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. They had put themselves in the place of Jesus, and this very dangerously goes against Scripture. Scripture tells us that we need to be a part of a church to receive biblical preaching and teaching, but it's also given all believers the Holy Spirit so we can understand the teachings of His Word. In John 14, 26, Jesus said, Let the help of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Never are we told to take the word of preachers and teachers at face value without comparing them to the words of Scripture. Neither are we told to take their word and compare it to another person's interpretation of Scripture. Instead, we are given the example of the Bereans that we see in Acts 17, verse 11. Now these Jews were more noble than those in Thessalonica. They received the word with all eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. We should not just accept another person's interpretation of scripture. We should examine scriptures to see if what they say agrees with it, since there are so many people who try to twist scripture to deceive others. While scripture can be difficult to understand at times, with the Holy Spirit, it is made crystal clear. However, false teachers use this difficulty to try to mislead and deceive others. This only leads to their destruction. False teachers are also known to cause division in the church. So if the Catholic Church was legitimate, the Pope has exhibited signs of being a false teacher. Scripture gives us this warning in 1 Timothy 4, verses 1 through 3. Now the Spirit expressly says that in later times, some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons, through the insincerity of liars whose consciences are seared. If forbid marriage and require abstinence from foods that God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. These things kind of sound familiar. The Catholic Church has departed from the faith and devoted themselves to deceitful teachings. They teach that you must perform all these sacraments to constantly work to keep your salvation, but Scripture teaches that faith comes by grace through faith. Their consciences are seared because they continually lie about the truth of God's Word and how to receive the gift of eternal life. 
The Catholic Church also forbids marriage for their clergy and requires the abstinence of certain foods during Lent. What does Scripture teach about salvation? In John 14, 6, we see that Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It doesn't say that you come to the Father through the church, but by believing in Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Instead of doing all these good works, rituals, and sacraments of the church to be saved, listen to what Scripture teaches. In Ephesians 3 and 9 we read, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. Not a result of works, so that no one may boast. It is only by putting your faith in the one who died to take the penalty for your sins that you can be saved. It is not by doing works. It is by the free gift of God's grace that is received by faith alone. It will lead to obedience to God's word and a desire to pursue moral holiness. But that is a far different picture than the Catholic Church teaches about following Christ. Scripture has strong words for those who teach a different gospel. In Galatians 1 verses 8 and 9, the Bible says, But even if we, or an angel from heaven, should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received, let him be accursed. Scripture is the final authority on these matters, not any church. Every church must adhere to the truth of Scripture, as it is the gold standard. In Isaiah 40 verse 8 we are told, The grass withers, the flower fades. But the word of our God will stand forever. In 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 and 17, we are told, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. As the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. The Catholic Church tries to build their authority on the word of man instead of the word of God. Since they rejected the Bible's authority, the Catholic Church will only continue their never-ending spiral away from God's truth. Our ultimate foundation is Jesus Christ himself. We see this in 1 Corinthians 3 verse 11. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Other verses describe Jesus as the head of the church, not some man in a tiny sovereign state in the middle of Italy. We must always compare the things we hear in church or Bible study with what we read for ourselves in Scripture. That does not mean that we should expect preachers or teachers to be infallible, only that we should hold them accountable with the Word of God. It is sad to see the Catholic Church depart from the truth regarding same-sex relationships. But it is no surprise since they have never stood on the truth of God's Word to begin with. How is this enlightened your view on biblical authority? Let me know in the comments below. Please like this video, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Also, follow us on social media and share this video. If you want to support this ministry, please consider donating. Also, be sure to join us for our Christmas Eve special. As always, thanks for watching. And until next time, walk in the truth.